Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. We are the students of Valley Institute of Quality Education from grade 8. And today we are going to deliver a presentation on the topic Polythene, a disaster. So in this lesson, there are four characters, Rakesh, Rakesh's father, Rakesh's uncle and Rakesh's cousin, whose name is Rohit. So Rakesh, a student of fifth standard, visits his uncle's house and finds a heap of dirt stinking outside his house. Rakesh uh, and his parents cover their mouths with handkerchiefs and rush inside the house. Rakesh's uncle and his family warmly welcome them. So this chapter is based on the conversation that goes on between the four characters and we are just starting right now. Of staying outside this house, it smells so bad. By the love friend, it's because of the dirt and waste stuck inside the polythene bags. What do you mean by the term polythene? It's a tough, light, flexible, simple resin made of polymerizing and leaves, mainly used for food containers and plastic bags. Who discovered it? It, it was discovered by a German scientist, Hans von Petman. Why did he create such a thing that could destroy the whole world? He had by accident made polythene, a red residue at the bottom of his test tube. Did they really know? It was the early form for the use nowadays in our daily lives. So, in uh, as we just saw, Rakesh asked his uncle, oh, uh, why is there uh, uh, a heap of dirt outside your house? His uncle answered, that it is uh, why it is uh, why it is stinking outside your house. Uh, his uncle answers that it is because of, because of the dirt that is stuck inside the polythene bag. Then Rakesh uh, a questions his uncle, what is polythene? What's the term that you just used? His uncle answers that polythene is a tough, light, flexible, synthetic resin that is made by polymerizing ethylene. So in uh, this sentence, meet uh, means that uh, polythene it's a it's really tough. It's a, and they, uh, it's a synthetic, it made the, it's made of uh, synthetic resin. Basically, there are two types of uh, resin, natural resin and synthetic resin. Natural resin is excreted by plants, uh, which is uh, used in adhesives and in uh, incense sticks. Uh, so, so resin just hardens over time and uh, it's sticky, it's a thick substance and is uh, used in a variety of products as a glue. And what's the difference between a synthetic resin and natural resin? Synthetic resin, it mimics the properties of a natural resin. Uh, it's uh, made from petroleum-based compounds. We are going to study later that uh, polythene is a petroleum-based product. So, uh, since it's made from uh, synthetic resin, so it is a, uh, it is a synthetic resin. So, it's made from petroleum-based compounds and it's used in adhesives and it is used in coatings to coat other substances. Then, Rakesh uh, continues to uh, question his uncle who discovered it. And why did he discover such a thing that uh, destroyed the whole world? So his uncle answered that it was, it was discovered by Hans von Peckman. He was a German scientist. And he discovered polythene uh, in 1898. Uh, he did not have any bad intention. Instead, he actually completely by accident he uh, discovered polythene. It was a battery residue. A residue is something that is left behind, the part that is left behind. So... Uh, there was a battery the residue at uh, the bottom of his test tube and that is how he discovered polythene. And uh, he did not know that this, this was an initial form. This was an early form of what we now use in our daily life. And now the conversation between him and his uncle continues. But why is there such a large quantity of polythene bugs? Masan, I'll tell you the reason for this. Now Ruvik entered the scene. What are you guys talking about? I really want to know it. Okay, dear, but listen carefully, and I hope you kids will stop using polythene after listening to me, which we elders have so far failed to do. But I want to promise from you that you will stop using polythene after this and encourage other people not to do so. All right, I promise. Are polythene bags not biodegradable? No, polythene bags are not biodegradable. They don't decompose on their own. And they have a side effect that if you burn them, they will cause immense air pollution. And polythene, polythene, like the polythene bags, are cheap and easy to carry, and they are easily found everywhere nowadays. But in ancient times, they were rarely found in 1960s and 70s, but their usage increased in 1980s. In Jammu and Kashmir, approximately 2 lakh polythene bags are used per day for purchase, storage, and other things. What are its negative impacts? Polythene has many negative impacts. It causes disease like malaria, cholera, and it, it, it decreases the fertility of soil, and 
It what what it does is it is a major role in blockage of sewer and water pipes during rainfall, which cause flood. And it also pollutes our fresh water bodies, which have become the dumping site for pollutants nowadays. <clears throat> now, in the uh, in the conversation that I just heard, uh, Rakesh asks his uh, uncle that uh, why is uh, why is there such a large quantity of polythene bags? So uh, just then Rohit interrupts them and he says that he also wants to know wants to know uh, what they're talking about. So then Rakesh's father tells them, "Okay, I will I will tell you the uh, uses of polythene and the harmful effects of polythene and everything else. But you have to promise me one thing that you guys that you kids will never use polythene and you will also that uh, and you will also encourage other kids not to use polythene in your neighborhood and in your school." Then they promise uh, Rakesh's father that they won't use polythene. Then Rakesh's uh, 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 father says that polythene is a cheap and uh, easy to carry material. It is really cheap, it is durable, uh, it is found almost everywhere. It's widely used by people. Uh, it was not. It was rarely found. It was not found during the uh, 1960s and 70s era, but it uh, rapidly increased its uh, usage rapidly increased uh, during the 1980s and it was because of its uh, durability it was because of its cheap grade it was uh, because of, uh, it was because it was lightweight and many other other factors uh, due to which it became popular during the 1980s then uh, we see that uh, <clears throat> Rakesh's father said that approximately in Srinagar uh, uh, about uh, 2 lakh Polythene bags are used every day for different everyday activities such as purchase, storage, carrying eatables such as vegetables, confectionery items, food, uh, uh, fruits, bakery, uh, sweets, etc. etc. Then Rakesh asks his father that is polythene not biodegradable? His father answers that no. My son, it is not biodegradable. That means it cannot decompose on its own. It cannot decay on its own. And there is a side effect of polythene that even if we burn it, it causes immense air pollution. It uh, releases uh, extremely toxic gases. For example, we can say carbon monoxide, uh, dioxin, furans, and uh, <coughs> hydrogen chloride. So these are some of the examples of gases released by a polythene when it's burned. Then Rakesh continues to ask his father, that what are its negative impacts? What are the, what are the uh, harmful effects of polythene? His father answers that polythene has many uh, negative impacts. It has many harmful effects. Uh, it uh, spreads diseases I, such as cholera, I malaria. Uh, cholera is a bacterial infection that is spread through water and it causes uh, dehydration in, <coughs> in our body. And uh, malaria is a uh, malaria is a disease that is spread by mosquitoes. We know that uh, when we see a place that is filled with garbage and trash and polythene bags and uh, and whatnot, uh, we see mos mosquitoes ari arising from that very place. And uh, they, when they arise from that place, they go everywhere and then they spread diseases like dengue and malaria. And uh, his father says that it increases the infertility of soil. And it also blocks the sewers and water pipes uh, uh, during heavy or moderate rainfall, which causes floods. And also, Rocky's father says that polythene uh, uh, immensely affects the uh, water bodies, the freshwater bodies such as lakes, rivers, uh, small streams, etc., which have become the dumping sites of polythene, and uh, it uh, really it greatly affects the flora and fauna of the underwater world. Now, the conversation continues. Does it affect marine life also? Yes, it also affects marine life. Polythene pollution enters the food chain through the process of biomagnification. Some aquatic organisms like bryozoans, barnacles, polychaetes, cra uh, crabs, and mollusks inhabit on uh, polythene and get transported to new places uh, through the ocean currents and, the, uh, and where they act as the uh, alien species and spread diseases. It is a cancer-causing agent. Polythene uh, is a petroleum product. When it, com uh, when it comes in direct contact with, with the food, it releases some chemicals. Uh, it causes AIDS and uh, thrombosis. So, uh, in this conversation, Rakesh asks his father the roles have been switched. This is uh, Rakesh now. He was, uh, she was previously uh, Rakesh's uh, father and now she is Rakesh's father and she was previously Rakesh. So, now, Rakesh asks his father, 
do marine does marine life also get affected from the uh, from polythene pollution his father answers yes it also affects the marine life the underwater world how it affects is that polythene pollution enters the bar enters the food chain through the process of biomagnification so in biomagnification a toxic substance increases in concentration for example we can take an example uh, like uh, yes uh, an organism in the sea consumes um, some plastic or uh, a polythene, some polythene bits. Then a fish uh, consumes that very organism and then a big fish, for example, we can take uh, a big fish, fish uh, such as a shark. The, the shark then consumes that fish and then some fish-eating animal consumes uh, <clears throat> the previous fish. So in this way, polythene increases in concentration. This toxic substance increases in the concentration in the food chain. And then Arakis' father, he says that many marine organisms like bryozoans, barnacles, crabs, polychaetes, mollusks, etc. Uh, they inhabit on polythene and they get transferred to new sites, to new places uh, through the ocean currents. And there they act as alien species, the non-native species of that particular site, of that particular place. And they spread diseases and they compete with the native species of that place. And I have some photos over here. These are bryozoans. They live together in a moss, in a lump. These are barnacles. They are a kind of free creature. This is a polychaete. It is a, a kind of sea worm. This is a crab, a sea creature with a five to six pair of legs. And this is a mollusk. Uh, this is a mollusk. Uh, there are different types of mollusks. Uh, mollusks. It, uh, it can be crab. It can be uh, octopuses. It can be uh, clams, it can be scallops, but I think here the reference uh, is to this one. Uh, it has a soft body with a hard shell covering. Next, Rakesh for this, uh, he says that a pet, uh, it is a petroleum product. Polythene is a petroleum product. It is uh, derived from petroleum-based compounds. And, but it is a suspected carcinogen. That means it is a cancer-causing agent. In studies with mice, it has been linked to the cancer of the colon. Colon in mice is the large intestine. It is a part of the digestive tract. When a polythene comes into the contact with food, it releases uh, chemicals and uh, contaminates the food. Uh, some examples of the chemicals are ethylene glycan, antioxidants, and plasticizers. Especially when it comes in contact with acidic and fatty food, it, uh, release, it is more prone to release uh, plasticizers. And when we burn it, it uh, releases cancer-causing gases. It causes AIDS and it causes thrombosis. AIDS is a disease uh, that uh, <coughs> that uh, damages our metabolism and it damages our natural protection against infection, which uh, normally causes our death. Uh, it is all. It is also called HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, and the full form of AIDS is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. And the next thrombosis, in thrombosis, uh, in a blood vessel, when uh, thrombosis causes a really big blood clot in a vessel, which causes a swelling in uh, any part of the body. And uh, now the conversation continues. Papa, how does it affect the soil? It decreases the fertility of a soil. It has the property of non-permeability non and can stop the respiration of soil. Uh, and of uh, effects of plants as well as animals living in soil. Does it affect animals also? Yes. It is often consumed by these three animals and cause their death. I remember a newspaper uh, that 40 kgs of polythene were consumed, were uh, recorded uh, by a veterinary surgeon in Rajasthan from a stomach of a uh, dead cow. Approx 1 billion marine animals die per year uh, due to this polythene pollution. If it's so dangerous, then why don't the government stop the use of or ban the use of polythene? It was banned in uh, several countries. In fact, in Jammu and Kashmir, the law was passed, but it was not implemented. Now, it's our responsibility to avoid the usage of polythene as to save our planet Earth, ourselves, and our future generation. In this conversation, Rakesh asks his father that, does it affect the soil also? Does polythene pollution affect the soil also? So his answer, his father's answer is yes, it does affect the soil. 
Uh, so basically, what it does it is that it uh, retards the carrying capacity of the soil. Here, carrying capacity refers to the plant growth and animal growth in the soil, and it can also be referred to as the uh, ability of the soil to provide water and nutrients to the plants and animals living in it. And Rakesh Swadhis says that polythene has the property of non permeability. That means uh, it does not allow any kind of gas or any kind of liquid to pass through it. And so it cuts off the respiration of the soil and uh, which uh, greatly, which immensely affects the plant and animal life living in the soil. Next, Rakesh asks his father that uh, this polythene uh, <clears throat> also affect the animals. So his father says, yes, it also affects the animals. Uh, his father says that uh, the polythene that we all, uh, that we often see on the roads it is consumed by different prey animals such as cows or dogs, and uh, he said that he remembers that a few years ago a newspaper reported that 40 kgs of polythene were recorded by veterinary surgeons in Rajasthan from the stomach of a dead cow, and approximately one billion marine animals die each year due to polythene pollution. Next, Rakesh asks his father that. Uh, if it's so dangerous, then why do? Then why doesn't the government ban its use? So his father answers: In uh, several countries, the governments have banned the use of polythene. In fact, in JNK, also a law was uh, passed uh, to ban the use of polythene within the boundaries of the state, within the territorial limits of the state. Uh, the law was passed on 18 June 2008, SRO Statutory Rules and Orders 182. So his father says that uh, even though the government has banned it, but it's the responsibility of the citizens to uh, uh, avoid the use of polythene and uh, to save ourselves, to save our planet Earth and to save our future generations from the harmful effects of polythene. Now, let us take a pledge to never use polythene. I request my fellow classmates to repeat after me and raise their hands like this. I take pledge. I, I take, take pledge to never use polythene. To never use polythene and protect the environment. And protect the environment. I will choose. I will choose eco-friendly alternatives. Eco-friendly alternatives and work to reduce. And work to reduce plastic waste. Plastic waste for a cleaner, greener future. For a cleaner, greener future.